I call the um, honourable member for Hasluck. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I rise today to speak on the Aged Care Amendments Bill 2000, uh, 2011. This bill introduces a number of amendments which form part of the government's health and hospital reform agenda. This bill plans to improve arrangements for complaints handling of Commonwealth funded aged care services and strengthen consumer protection for accommodation bonds paid to aged care services. The history of this bill is interesting and one and for once demonstrates <clears throat> those on the other side sometimes consult and listen to key stakeholders. Especially on an issue as important as aged care, we would expect the government to undertake consultations. The issues paper on enhanced prudential regulation of accommodation bonds, released in October 2010, resulted in a consultation paper being released in February this year, which was followed by a number of industry, consumer and regulatory stakeholders meeting with the government to work through the issues raised. In Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander society, elders are consulted because of their knowledge, wisdom and life experiences. Their guidance helps to shape our future and teaches us humility, compassion and understanding. Ageism is not a factor, nor is age. Members of this House need to fully appreciate that if we applied the same approach in our wider society, then we are more likely to provide the level of aged care services and facilities that reflect their needs, including staying at their, in, within their own home. It is that generation that built and continued to build this great country of ours and the lifestyle we enjoy, so therefore we should take care of them. The current regulation around the use of accommodation bonds is not consistent throughout the industry. The Department of Health and Ageing has identified through monitoring and compliance activity and financial reports from a range of providers that the lack of consistency of interpretation as to the permitted use of bonds has led to many providers misusing them. The Aged Care Act provides that if an accommodation bond is charged to the care recipient by the aged care provider, then the provider must not use the bond for a purpose that is not related to providing aged care to care recipients. It also stipulates that where a bond is charged, then the provider is entitled to the income derived from the bond and may also deduct retention amounts from the bond principal. However, there are restrictions on how these amounts can be used. As mentioned before, the Department of Health and Ageing has found that a number of providers are using bonds to make loans to related parties and meet operational costs, making loans to related entities and to individuals with variable practice in documenting the loans, repayment arrangements and interest charges and failing to meet the existing prudential standards related to bonds. Since the prudential requirements were introduced in 2006, over 15 per cent of the aged care industry has found to be non-compliant. Mr Deputy Speaker, our aged care system is a mess under this government. According to the Grant Thornton Aged Care Performance Survey in 2007, over 40 per cent of all providers were operating in the red. And I find that fascinating in this day and age. The Aged Care Industry Council <coughs> stated in its 2011 to 2012 budget submission that only 40 per cent of residential aged care services are operating in the black. Hours of services are decreasing and hours of care provided under community aged care packages have fallen. And many providers are not building new residential care beds. And I find this important because in my own electorate I have a large demographic, but part of that demographic are ageing Australians and retirees who, in, as time moves, will either remain in their homes for a period until such time as they are unable to continue in independent residential living, but will move into a facility that will provide the levels of support that they require. And in some instances, those who need more intensive care move from my electorate into two other regions of the metropolitan area because the aged care facilities where, uh, that are established in our electorate don't have the capacity to meet the number. The industry needs urgent help. No one knows this better than Mr David Fenwick in my electorate of Hasluck, 
who I work extremely closely with on the issues that impact on the industry. Mr Fenwick is the Chief Executive Officer of Amaru Village in Gosnells, Amaru, and provides independent living units, 92 high-level care places and 81 low care places. Amaru is an outstanding example of how the industry is making it work. They struggle to meet operating costs, but recognise there is a need in the area and continue to work towards the best outcomes possible for residents. Back in January, my colleague Don Randall and I the were presented Canning, with the petitions. For Sorry, the member for Canning. Uh, were presented with petitions from aged care providers in our electorates of Canning and Hasluck. The aim of the petition is to, and I quote, let Canberra know about the needs of older Australians, their right to quality care and the support they deserve now and in the future. Their voices deserve to be heard. The pity with the petitions, Mr Deputy Speaker, is they didn't meet the required uh, requirements and the rigour of the requirements for petitions to be tabled in the House, although nevertheless the message was quite strong. The management and care team at Amaru are passionate about their work and they deserve to be supported by governments. This is consistent in all of the aged care facilities that I have visited within Hasluck. Instead, the government has broken its election promise to repeal one regulation for every new regulation. Red tape and bureaucracy is holding the industry back. The burden of growing regulation is a disgrace. The Coalition is committed to reducing Commonwealth regulation by at least one billion per year. Unlike those on the other side, we will want to see industry encouraged to innovate, grow and provide the best possible services to those who need it the most. Mr Deputy Speaker, we need to be supporting the aged care industry now because we should remember that one day we will most likely need to access the services provided by the aged care industry. When we grow old and need support, the aged care industry and those carers and providers who are extremely passionate will be looking after us. Unfortunately, only when that day comes for those opposite will they realise that they should have been more supporting of the aged care industry, much better than what they have been. The aged care industry is becoming financially unviable and providers go into going into liquidation have increased. However, many are being absorbed by larger facilities, thus not giving an accurate representation of the state of the industry. The changes proposed by this bill strike a balance between explicit regulatory requirements and a risk-based approach. It is difficult to accurately quantify the regulatory impact of those proposed changes due to the lack of available data. The changes include the following. To provide a regulatory framework that is equal to the risk associated with the strong growth of accommodation bond holdings. Increase incentives for bonds to be used in a prudent and sustainable way to meet policy objectives of allowing providers to charge bonds. Further, any cost to providers due to changes to ensure that bonds are only used for permitted purposes are minimised by removing current restrictions on the use of income derived from the bonds. Retention amounts and accommodation charges and giving providers complete flexibility over how such income is used and providing a transition period of two years which allows approved providers time to comply with the new arrangements. The changes also ensure that the financial interests of care recipients are protected. These proposed changes will take effect in relation to accommodation bonds taken by approved providers on or after 1 October 2011, and the new complaints principles will take effect on 1 September of that same year. A two-year transition period will conclude and at the end of September 2013 to allow the changes to permitted users of accommodation bonds, which will allow the sector to become familiar with the new requirements. <clears throat> A post-implementation review will take place in 2014 or 2015. This review will be extremely important to the industry, and I certainly look forward to seeing the outcome and what the challenges are. Another key element of this bill is the management and resolution of complaints about aged care services. The bill proposes that the investigation principles 
be replaced with new complaints principles. This will provide greater flexibility for complainants and, as such, will result in a range of options available to assist in resolving a complaint, including early resolution, conciliation and mediation. I support this measure, as people accessing the industry deserve to be looked after. Mr Deputy Speaker, in my electorate of Hasluck, there are 22 approved aged care providers, which provide a total of 321 community care places. 313 residential high care places and 610 residential low care places. I have been privileged enough to visit a number of these providers and they provide outstanding service to those in Hasluck that need it. I will always fight for the needs of the aged care sector because they are an important part of the Hasluck community. We all know someone who is accessing aged care services and as such we have a duty to stand up and argue to improve the quality of the industry. This is, my, this is a passion of mine, as I stated in my first speech. Elders within Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and societies are revered and respected and hold a special place. They do not go away but remain as wisdom givers and guides in our future. The same con concept has to be applied to all seniors and retirees, and the support they require should be accorded them. I have found that in the short time I have represented the seat of Hasluck, what I've enjoyed is the privilege of meeting people within residential care, but equally those who've made the decision to stay and live at home. What they find is the level of support provided in, in the home has been welcomed. What is disappointing, though, is where there is increasing numbers, there is not the financial capital to build the infrastructure required to provide the number of beds that are needed. And I would hope that in the future, with the Productivity Commission report and the work that we do on this side, will help contribute to solutions that will make a difference across this nation for our elder people who will need the services and opportunities that are provided, both socially and in terms of a secure facility that provides them with a bed and the comfort of support. I revere our seniors. I believe that they provide opportunities for us to learn of the past, to take their knowledge and use it for the future, to understand our history in this nation. And I have seen many children when I was teaching enjoy the relationship where we had a connection with an aged care home, where those who didn't have grandparents enjoyed the relationship with seniors in those villages. And what they did like was the fact that they were talking to people who had lived through a history where they had seen a transition from horse and cart, horses, to the type of vehicles and to the type of technology that we have in this day and age. I just hope that this government gives due attention to the needs of our elderly and to aged care services. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I thank the honourable member for Hazlitt.